In the fourth installment of the Boeing 777 landing gear series, we will explore the aircraft's parking brake system. Currently, the aircraft is on the ground, with the main engines and APU shut down. The external electrical power is connected, and the electric motor-driven hydraulic pumps are selected to power the three independent hydraulic systems. Now let's set the parking brake. The parking brake lever controls the parking brake system. The lever mechanically operates the brake latch mechanism to lock the brakes in the applied position. The latch mechanism is below the captain's brake pedals. To set the parking brake, the pedals are moved to the fully applied position. Then the parking brake lever is pulled and the pedal pressure is released. This holds the brake pedals in the applied position and the lever stays upright. To release the parking brake, the pedals are fully pressed. The parking brake lever moves to the down position. Then the pedal pressure is released and the brake pedals return to the neutral position. The parking brake can also be set and released by using the first officer's brake pedals. When the pedals are pushed, the transverse control rods will simultaneously move the captain's brake pedal mechanism. Pulling the lever and releasing the pedal pressure will set the parking brake. To release the parking brake, the pedals are pressed, the lever disengages, and the pedal pressure is released. Let's see the brake latch mechanism in detail. When the pedal is pressed, the captain's brake pedal mechanism's lower bell crank moves aft against the pedal spring force. The brake quadrant moves the brake control cables. The brake cables operate the brake metering valves, and the main landing gear brakes are applied. The parking brake lever is pulled against the latch spring force, and the latching pawls move into position. Then, as the pedal pressure is released, the pedal spring will move the pedals back, and the latching pawls will engage with the pawl stops on the lower bell crank. This latches the brake pedals in the applied position and holds the lever up to set the parking brake. To release the parking brake, the pedal is fully pressed. This allows the latch spring tension to pull the latching pawls down and release the parking brake lever. Once the pedal pressure is released, the pedal spring will return them to the neutral position. During ground operation, the parking brake is used to hold the aircraft in position. But latching the brake pedals in the applied position is not enough, as the parking brake also has to function for a longer duration and must operate even when the aircraft's hydraulic and electrical power is switched off. Therefore, the parking brake system uses additional components for operation and indication. Some of these components are the parking brake latch switch near the latching mechanism, the brake accumulator pressure indicator, and the upper center display in the cockpit, the parking brake set light on the nose landing gear, and the airplane information management system in the avionics compartment. When the external electrical power is connected, it supplies power to all the electrical panels, including the standby panel. Power from the standby panel reaches the parking brake latch switch. The latch switch controls power to the parking brake valve. When the parking brake is not set, the power is connected to the valve open signal cable. When the parking brake is set, the latch mechanism operates the switch to connect power to the valve close signal cable. The signal operates the parking brake valve. The parking brake valve has two limit switches, a brushless DC motor, and the valve body. The power signal passes through the close limit switch and the controller operates the motor to close the valve. In the initial rotation of the shaft, the lower cam releases the open limit switch. As the valve reaches the closed position, the upper cam on the shaft operates the close limit switch and cuts the power to the motor winding. This stops the valve in the closed position and the switch connects the power to the parking brake indication wire. When the parking brake is released, the latch switch sends power to the open limit switch. Disconnecting power from the close limit switch will remove the parking brake indication signal. The open limit switch powers the controller and operates the motor in the opposite direction to open the valve. In the initial rotation of the shaft, the upper cam releases the close limit switch back to its position, ready for the next parking brake application. As the valve reaches the open position, the lower cam engages the open limit switch and stops the motor operation. When the parking brake is set and the valve closes, the indication wire sends the signal to operate the parking brake relay. The relay controls the power to the parking brake set indications. 
As the relay is energized, the power turns on the parking brake set light on the nose landing gear. A signal is also sent to the airplane information management system to display a parking brake set message in the cockpit. When the parking brake is released, the relay de-energizes and the indications are removed. The parking brake valve controls the normal brake system's anti-skid return line. When full brakes are applied, the normal brake metering valve operates, and the right hydraulic system pressure reaches the normal anti-skid module. The metered pressure operates the anti-skid valve and applies the brakes. The hydraulic valves designed to provide precision control will experience some internal leakage through the return line of the hydraulic system. The anti-skid valve module is most vulnerable to internal leakage due to its complexity and the higher number of components in use. Pressure leakage is not a problem when the main hydraulic system pressure is available. If the pressure drops due to leakage, the feedback pressure of the metering valve decreases. For the current pedal position, a drop in feedback pressure will operate the metering valve and the constant available system pressure will replenish the pressure drop due to internal leakage. When the parking brake lever is pulled and the pedal is released. As the pedal moves back slightly, the metering valve operates and the metered pressure reduces, which in turn marginally reduces the brake pressure. Once latched, the parking brake lever maintains the pedals in the brake applied position. This locks the brake pressure of all 12 main landing gear brakes. At the same time, the parking brake valve closes to stop leakage from the normal anti-skid module. When the parking brake is released, as the metering valve operates to release metered pressure, the parking brake valve opens to allow the brake pressure to be released through the anti-skid valves. The right hydraulic system pressure also charges the brake accumulator. The accumulator is pre-charged with pressurized nitrogen gas to 1,000 PSI. The higher right system pressure pushes the floating piston and compresses the nitrogen gas until the system and accumulator pressures are equal. When the right hydraulic system pressure is unavailable, the alternate source selector valve opens and the center system pressure reaches the alternate metering valves. The center system pressure will also operate the brake accumulator isolation valve and save the accumulator pressure. Now the parking brake can be set using the alternate brake system. When brake pedals are applied, the alternate metering valves will operate and apply brake pressure through the alternate anti-skid module. The anti-skid shuttle valve will operate to select the higher available pressure and the brakes are applied. When we set the parking brake and latch the brake pedals, the alternate brake pressure gets locked. The parking brake valve closes, but to no avail, as the alternate anti-skid valve pressure will leak through the alternate anti-skid return line of the center hydraulic system. Again, the leakage is not a problem, as the constant available system pressure will compensate for the pressure loss due to leakage. Releasing the parking brake will operate the alternate system valves and the brake pressure will return to the center system. But when the aircraft is on the ground, even if electrical power is available for ground service operations, the hydraulic pumps are always turned off. When the right and center hydraulic systems are unavailable, the isolation valve will open and the accumulator pressure will reach the normal brake metering valves. The parking brake can be set using the accumulator's stored pressure. If the brakes are applied, the normal brake system valves will operate, and the accumulator pressure will move the piston to pressurize the brake lines. The shuttle valve will switch again to select the accumulator pressure for brake application. But unlike the main hydraulic systems, where the system pressure remains constant due to pump operation, the brake accumulator pressure reduces as the nitrogen gas expands and moves the piston to pressurize the brake lines. Since full pedal force has been applied, Due to the decline in accumulator pressure, the feedback pressure is not strong enough to return the metering valve to the brake maintained position. As a result, the metered pressure line remains connected to the accumulator pressure line. Even when the parking brake application moves the pedals back slightly, the same applied accumulator pressure will be locked. This is where the parking brake valve function is critical. By closing the parking valve, the internal leakage of the anti-skid valve module is prevented and the accumulator pressure will last longer. If the anti-skid line is not blocked, the accumulator pressure will drop at a faster rate. When the parking brake is released, the applied brake pressure will return to the right hydraulic system. 
The available accumulator pressure information is important for the parking brake operation and is measured using the accumulator pressure transducer. The transducer measures the nitrogen gas pressure and works on the principle of variable resistance. The resistance is inversely proportional to the pressure. When the accumulator is fully charged, the resistance value is the lowest. As the nitrogen pressure dropped when we applied the parking brake, the resistance value increased. The transducer sends the current nitrogen pressure signal to the accumulator pressure indicator in the cockpit. The indicator uses the resistance data and provides the accumulator pressure information. The parking brake system can function even when the aircraft's electrical power is completely disconnected. When external power is removed, the aircraft still has battery power. When the main panel's electrical power is lost, the standby panel will switch to battery power. The battery directly powers the important DC buses and, with the help of an inverter, powers the standby AC bus. The battery switch controls the main battery relay. When selected to off, the relay disconnects power from the hot battery bus to the other buses. But the hot battery bus is always powered. When switched on, the relay allows the power from the hot battery bus to reach the other buses. The captain's instrument bus powers the center display, the battery bus powers the brake accumulator indicator, and the hot battery bus powers the parking brake valve through the latch switch. The battery is a time-limited power source and will drain out quickly under full load. Therefore, when the main power is unavailable, it is important to switch off the battery. When we turn off the battery, we lose the center display, the accumulator pressure indicator, and most of the standby-powered components. But the latch switch that controls the power to the parking brake valve remains powered. This allows us to set the parking brake, as the latch switch will operate to close the parking brake valve and block the anti-skid return line. But there will be no parking brake status indication, as the other standby buses are not powered. Releasing the lever will open the parking brake valve. Since the power to the parking brake valve is disconnected once it reaches its commanded position, it will not drain the battery. Thanks to the hot battery bus and the brake accumulator stored pressure, the parking brake can be set even when the aircraft's condition is cold and dark. Despite the operation of the parking brake valve, it is not possible to completely seal the applied brake pressure, since the hydraulic valves will experience some internal leakage. As the pressure continues to drop due to leakage, the accumulator pressure will reduce over time. A fully charged accumulator on the 777 will keep the brakes applied for at least 8 hours. Once the nitrogen pressure moves the piston to its stop, which is around 1000 psi, the accumulator pressure is lost. Without the accumulator's piston force, the line pressure cannot be sustained and the brakes will be released. The aircraft is free to move even though the parking brake is set. Therefore, despite having the parking brake system, the wheel chocks are preferred for long-duration parking. In the next chapter of the landing gear series, we will explore the steering control system. Thanks for watching.